So today we are back in the edit bay. I uh, know you all have been loving the Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial content and I'm going to go ahead and uh, make this new video about how I create multi-cams for interviews in Final Cut Pro 10. This tutorial also assumes that you already know a lot about multi-cams. I'm not going to be teaching all the different little buttons and menu options. It's assuming that you already have familiarity with multi-cams and you've used multi-cams before, but maybe there's some tricks or things that I do and how I handle multi-cams that may make you handle yours a little bit differently. But just to give you a little bit of a context of what we're working with here, we have an interview that we filmed as part of a documentary project that we're doing. It's a passion project about the impact that COVID-19 has had on small businesses in the Omaha Metro, specifically Council Bluffs, Iowa. And uh, we recorded a number of interviews, two camera interviews with uh, business owners, the mayor, different people in Council Bluffs to get an understanding of what that impact was. This is gonna be a big project. We're gonna, we did the first round of filming uh, a few months ago, and then we're gonna catch up a year later with all the same people and see what has changed for better or for worse with COVID-19 and their businesses. So today we're taking a look at Mayor Matt Walsh's interview. I haven't done anything with this project yet as far as setup goes. It's simply on my drives, backed up and archived. We have two cameras. We have a Canon EOS R with a Ninja 5, and then we have my C300 Mark II recording, both in 4K. We have a, a wireless LAV. It's not like a Sennheiser that mixes into the uh, C300 Mark II. It just records independently to itself. It's a Tascam DR10L, so we have our subject LAV. So we also have a boom microphone for our interviewee, and that's going directly into the C300 Mark II, so it's already synced to picture coming out of the camera. We do need to get the LAV angle into the multi-cam as well as the two angles for the camera, so it's going to have three tracks, if you will, in the multi-cam, and we'll go ahead and get started. I'm in Final Cut, and again, because we're doing a tutorial, I'm just on my one screen. Normally, I have Final Cut on two screens. So we've got our event browser here, our viewer window here, our timeline down here. Just to give a quick rundown of what I've got in here, I have my uh, interview folder under my footage event, and I created a smart collection for Mayor Walsh, and then I also have a smart collection for the multicam clips that we're gonna create. Normally when you create a multicam, it creates a new clip that goes into the event browser, and you usually have to go find it and kind of put it in the keyword collection that you want. I always make a smart collection that is labeled as multi so that when I make that new multi-cam clip, I'll call it like Matt Walsh multi, it'll automatically go into this smart collection. So let's go ahead and take a look here. I'm gonna to go to the library level so I can see all of the media. And we can see we have two takes for this interview on both cameras and then just one long run of audio from the LAV. All right, so what we're gonna to do to make the multi-cam is we're gonna select the first take from the EOS R the first take from the C300 Mark II, and then the audio from the LAV. We'll right click and choose new multi-cam clip, and then we'll call this Matt Walsh Multi. We're calling it Multi because I have that smart collection that's programmed for anything labeled Multi to automatically go into that smart collection. Double check all of these settings, everything looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay, and it's gonna very quickly make that multi-cam. And we'll double check that it's in the multi-smart collection, which it is, so that's great. We'll double click to take a look inside. There we go, all this looks synced up nicely. One thing I like to do is click on all the audio and play it back and make sure there's no like echoiness that uh, indicates that there's some sync issues. Uh, two days. Oh, actually, that sounds okay. So anytime you make a multicam that has multiple clips as a part of an, an interview, you have a choice of making separate multicams for each of those, or you can put them all together. I like in this instance to actually put them all together. So what I'm gonna do to do that is I'm going to grab that second take of the EOS R and drag it down into this track for the EOS R, all right? Now, this is out of sync, so I need to get it synced. Because I don't have a C300 clip down here that I can sync this clip to, I'm gonna have to sync this clip to the LAV audio. So what I wanna do is I wanna make this LAV audio clip the monitoring angle. And to be able to sync this to the LAV, I can simply click on this clip, hit this little caret, and choose Sync Selection to Monitoring Angle. Final Cut's gonna analyze the audio and sync that clip up based on the audio. 
Now what I want to do, just to check sync, is I want to choose both audio channels to be on and then play it back. Now this window is black because I have the monitoring angle set to audio. There's no video information, so it can't show anything. If I hit the monitoring angle, it'll it'll uh, now show video. So that looks good. Now I want to get the second C300 uh, shot in there. So I'm going to drag that down into the C300 track. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to sync this up to the LAV and choose sync selection to monitoring angle. So we're going to let Final Cut analyze it. It's going to bump it into the right place. I'm going to switch this to the monitoring angle and then just double check that we have sync. Now that all sounds good. I don't hear any echo or sort of off offness in the sync. So now that I have everything in place, I have a multi-cam with all of the interview clips in there from both cameras and the lav mic. What I want to do now is I want to sort of organize and rearrange the multi-cam that's a little bit better for me if I ever need to go into the multi-cam and make adjustments. So this long file name is unnecessarily complex. I'm going to change this to just lav. And then for this, so I don't have all this this title information from the file name, I'm just going to call this close because it's my close up or my close angle. And then I'm going to switch this to wide because it's my wide angle. Now I want to rearrange these sort of based on the primary angle, secondary angle. And then I always like to put audio at the bottom. So I'm going to use these little grabbers here and drag this up to the top. That's definitely a technical term, these little grabbers here. They're just like these lines that show that you can move things up and down and put this one below it. So now we have everything in place the way that I like it and we have the lob angle here as an option for audio if we need it during the interview. Most likely I'm not going to use the lob audio in my edit. It'll be there for the sound mixer if they decide that they want to in post to include that angle or if they need it because something gets scratchy or whatever with the, the boom mic. But for the most part that's just j there as a safety and something to use if necessary. So I'm going to switch the uh, audio off on this and I think all this looks good. So I'm gonna kick out to a timeline. It doesn't look like I have one pre-made, so I'm just gonna make a new project here. You can go up to the menu uh, and uh, do this, or you can hit Command N. I'm gonna just call this Matt Walsh uh, V1 uh, and have it under project. It's in 4K ProRes 422LT, that's all good. Um, we'll actually call this Rough Edit V1 because I have these smart collections. Uh, so it'll go into the right place. And you see because this is a smart collection that's programmed to say anything that has rough edit goes automatically into the smart collection, this is there. Then I'm going to go back to my footage event, grab that multicam, hit E to get it down in the timeline. And you can see here that we've got, uh, we've got everything that we need. I just want to double check that all this looks good and show you if you do put, start working with this in the timeline right away, how you can change these angles. So right now, you, if you want to change angles from the EOS R, the close-up angle, you can right-click and choose uh, the video angle uh, and make it the wide if you want. And then if you want to change it back to the EOS R, you can. And then if you want to change the audio angle from something other than the lav, you can as well. Our good boom audio was on the wide shot uh, through the C300, so I'm going to go ahead and change the audio to that. You can also change those things up here in the inspector. You have control over the multi-cam here to be able to tell it what you want as the, the settings for that. And then you can also check the um, audio here. On the C300, it was recording scratch audio through the monaural microphone while it was recording to the boom at, at the same time. So I'm just going to listen and see if I need to just... Dis shifted, obviously, to uh, preparation for healthcare if uh, a surge and Yes, the community. So far, we've been fortunate. To... So this disables the two uh, monaural uh, audio tracks from the scratch audio, the built-in microphone, and lets me just listen to the boom so audio. In their morgue and... If I want the scratch audio back in, I can just click those the, uh, this button to bring it back in. But for the most part, I'm going to leave it out. If I need to go back into the multicam, I can double-click 
and go inside. I like to, if I'm gonna apply uh, like a, a very basic grade, I like to try to put that inside the multicam. So, it, so it, if I blade and cut up the multicam, I don't have to worry about applying that color grade to every single clip. One thing that I do do is I enhance the audio using a preset that I have made called Dialog Audio. And I got the information for these settings from Caleb Pike over at DSLR Video Shooter. He has a great video to show you what settings in a compressor and a limiter effect you can use to really make your dialogue audio compressed and balance out, take out the highs and lows, and really get a nice even sound. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that to this. And I'm also gonna apply it, um, we'll just apply it to everything. And then I'm going to do it again on the second take. And I'm going to put it on the lob as well, just so that it's, if I do want to use the lob, it's, it's better audio. And then we'll go here and get a sense of where the audio levels have, are. Uh, a funeral. And so they are asking. That certainly sounds much better. And it, the, the dialogue's hitting a lot higher now. Band. Right so here, just above negative 12. Um, take. So I'm gonna go back inside and bump this up maybe, let's just try four dB. So I'm hitting control plus on the clip to increase the decibels one decibel at a time. And then I'll go back out and check where that's Excellent. reading at. So um, I reference it and I, I didn't come up with the name. I heard it somewhere else, the date. So I think for editing purpose, getting a rough edit done, I think we're good with those audio levels. One thing I don't do when I'm editing interviews is I don't just put the whole multicam in a timeline and start cutting it up. I have another video on the channel about how I edit interviews in Final Cut Pro 10, and it picks up right where I'm leaving off right now. You've just made your multicam and you're about to do what's called logging your footage. And that means you're marking using favorites, keywords, and markers what the interviewer asked and what the interviewee said. I have a whole process on how to do that uh, on that video. It'll be linked above, so definitely check it out. This tutorial is a little bit sort of like me sitting down and actually doing this and talking you through it. If there's anything that I miss, please don't hesitate to hit me up in the comments. I've been editing with multi-cam interviews for, for years in Final Cut, and this is the method that I use when I sit down and prep my footage get all the multi-cams made, and get ready to start logging all of the interviews before I edit the piece together. So that should cover it for this video, everyone. I hope you got something valuable out of this tutorial. We'd love it if you liked this video, and it's really the best way that you can get us in front of more people that might find this content valuable. If you are not a subscriber to the channel, and I know a lot of you aren't, about 90% who are watching my Final Cut videos aren't subscribers to the channel, click that subscribe button and the bell so you get notifications every time we upload a video. If you want to follow me on social media, I'm at Matthew T. O'Brien on Twitter and Instagram, and my company is at Midland Pictures on Instagram. Thanks so much for everybody who's new to the channel. We're thrilled to be building this community, and I couldn't be more excited about sharing this Final Cut Pro content with all of you. I think that's going to cover it for this video, everyone, so until the next one, I'll see you all soon.